Hey, thank y'all for dropping by. And guess what? The Easter Bunny's on his way in, but hey, we're going to help him out with the egg situation. We got deviled eggs three ways, a sweet, a spicy, and there's a secret ingredient in one. Come on, let's hop on down there. I'll see you in camp. Thank y'all for stopping by camp. We are so glad and so honored to have you because folks, you have tuned into a place to where we're just gonna bring you peacefulness, happiness, maybe even some excessive tail wagging and great recipes. That's what we got to share with y'all because we are so glad we're watching. We care about each and every one of you and we consider you all family, we do. And today, woo we something that's graced every summer picnic I have, ever Easter dinner that was ever laid out there so beautiful. Guess what it is? What? You heard me talking about it. Deviled eggs. Mm, mm, mm. Oh no, dose and trace. Three ways in Oklahoma that is, and ooh, they are good. Every one of them's a little different. So let's talk about some tips for these deviled eggs, you want to? And first of all, folks, I think the thing that rings the bell right up there at the top, number one is a fresh egg if you can find it. I'm talking fresh. I want you to sneak over, put your hand under that chicken's butt and just sort of walk around till it lays that egg. That's what I'm talking fresh. But if you can't get a fresh egg or you can't get there, folks, I, I really have become fond of them organic brown eggs, cage free. They got a tougher shell on them than them white things that you can nearly hold up to the light and see through right off the bat. I do love a brown egg. They are some goodness, they are. But the next thing we're gonna talk about is you need to put your pot on that stove, get you some water boiling before you ever think about putting them eggs in there, okay? Make sure it is boiling. Then you can put them in a spoon or you can place them ever so gingerly in there. And we're gonna let them boil 10 minutes at the least. 10 minutes is what we're looking for, folks. That is a good hard boiled egg. When that takes place, turn the fire off. If you're tough like me, reach in there and just grab them out of there. It'll get a spoon, dip them out, Let's put them in something, cover them with water, cover them with ice. Now to me, I really think if you let them things chill good right there, then let's drain them, then let's set them in the ice box. Hey, I like to let them chill about two hours. I think they even peel better that way. So the number one, remember I told you there's three of them. We're gonna start in numerical order we are. Number one, Shan's recipe. And whoo, it even made the cookbook. What you say, you don't have one of these? Well, they are available now. We worked hard on putting them in there. And I did follow a chicken around out there for a long time to get enough eggs for Shan to create this recipe. When you go to cracking these eggs, I like to crack them all the way around. Now, some of you might be thinking as you look there, we ain't even got another bowl to put these in, sugar. So we're gonna put them in here for right now. If some of you have ever went back and watched the Scotch egg video and remember how we took them out of, whoa, little cackleberries, took them out of there and then blowed the egg right out of the shell. You can do that if you're gifted. You can look at that video. Okay, folks, here we go. We got this here egg. Now y'all have heard me call it a cackleberry, a rooster bullet, and some hen fruit. Now all of these are available and you can pick up at your local, local chicken house. You can. Make sure the neighbor ain't there. He might not want you getting them. So the recipe says cut them lengthwise. Now we're gonna do that, but I like to do that with a serrated knife rather than just a sharp knife. So. We're just gonna take, try to get right in the center and just cut right through there. Oh my gosh, so precise it is. Why am I doing just three when the recipe called for six? Because folks, I've been practicing on this all week and Shan will tell you, when I eat that many eggs, if we have to make the whole recipe, it might not be good folks. So we're just doing it with three, but the recipe you will get will be the complete deal. Three little eggers, the yolk. That's what we gotta get out of there folks. See how they come out when they good and chilled like that? And I want you to know, folks, that we're gonna put all these together and then we're gonna showcase it there at the end. So we got our little empty shells, which need to be loaded back up here in a minute. So we'll put them right out there like that. Now, I have done this different ways, but it is best if you do it with a fork and I'm gonna to have to get mine. Didn't take long. I thought I left it somewhere else, didn't you? Uh -huh. Y'all were all thinking, maybe it's at town. Now, I don't like to combine nothing else before you just go ahead and let's just mash these eggs up. Now, whew, that right there, mm, that's what I call looking some good already. So get them all mashed up really good and then next is gonna come on the goodness. So we are gonna put them right there in the middle. 
I want you to pan over and look at that dog, Shan. What is that dog's name? Duke. Duke. He has his own line of mayonnaise now, Duke's. So many of you Southern folks have always been telling me, boy, cowboy, you need to get some Duke's mayo. Well, folks, if you can find this stuff, it is actually the best mayonnaise I have ever used in my life. Next, we're going to add some relish. And folks, you got to be having some kind of mustard. Now, you can use that spicy brown mustard, Dijon mustard, but I'm going to use about this much. That is the correct amount. Now, remember when we was telling you there was one that was extra devilish in this deal? Ooh, guess what it is? No, don't. I hear some of you out there, the cowboy done broke out to potted meat. No, it is not. Y'all seen me take a picture of it earlier? It is deviled ham. Shan got to tell me she used to love this stuff spread on a sandwich, and when she was going to school, she'd have it. So we're going to add us some of that there deviled ham. And next comes the mixing apparatus. So we'll just get her all back over, and in this big bowl, that may take just a little time, but it's going to be just right, it is. So we got it to this point, and now would be a time to where we might need to adjust it for salt, pepper, maybe even a little more relish, or even a little more mustard. So guess what? We're going to salt and pepper it, we are, because I know it's going to need a little of that. And then we're going to add a little salt. Give it another stir. Mm. Folks, you get that little bite of relish in there with that deviled ham, but I sort of got a sweet tooth today, so I'm just going to add just a tad bit more of that relish. The salt and pepper and the mustard intake is what I'd call just right, so we're going to call it at that. That deviled ham in there, mmm. Shan must have knew what she was talking about when she put that in there. So, if it was me doing it, we'd do it a different way, but Shan says we're going to put all this in a baggie and we're going to pipe it in there. Now, piping something you do to water if you're trying to get it down there to another set of cows, but I'm going to pay attention today, so pardon with me while I get a baggie. I think they're in here. Some of you might be asking yourself, say, cowboy, why such a big baggie? <laughs> Matches the big bowl it does, so I guess I'm in pretty good shape. Just make sure you get it all in there. So we got our little eggs in the little deal. We got all our little fellers ready to be loaded there. So just take your knife and cut the corner of this right out of there, unless you got one of them piping bags like we used in the churro video. And then Shan says make them pretty. So I'm just going to make them like that right there. Y'all can tell my pastry chef ability might not be as good as y'all's or Shan's. We're going all out. We're going to use us some smoked paprika. And you can sprinkle as heavy or as light as you see fit. The wind is blowing, so we're going to have to low and get way back <laughs> over here. But, ooh, that nerd didn't get a little dusting on one side. But folks, that right there is what you called a deviled ham and egg. Recipes in the cookbook and it is so good, but don't quit me now because we're fitting to get to version number two. Well, on to round number two it is, and this is what I call spicing it up just a bit. Woo wee, and they gonna be oh so good. So you see me, we done put all them eggs in there and just like before, we gotta do a little mashing. So get them back over here in the middle. And folks, we're gonna go back with that Duke's mayonnaise again. I'm gonna add me some mayonnaise. Some look at here. Honey Dijon mustard. About that much. Now folks, y'all knew I was gonna break it out sooner or later, didn't you? The green chili chipotle relish. Now if you ain't got this, I'd advise you to order some, but if you can't get it in time, hey, get you some of them adobo peppers. You know, chipotle pepper in adobo sauce. Get you one out of there, chop it up really good. But I would put me just a little bit of white sugar in there with it because you need that sweetness for this recipe. So we're going to put about a tablespoon of that as well. We're going to add us some garlic. And last but not least, some Red River Ranch Mesquite because it's got some of that ancho chili. Now I'm just going to start with a little because we are going to mix it again 
and taste it to see if we're about right. But folks, this is probably one of my favorites. Even though Shan's recipe is great and I love it. Mm. Well, we have got her mixed up. But somewhere we have a spoon. Mm. See y'all next week, folks. I'm going to go ahead and just eat this. Mm. That is some fine dining right there. So I don't think we need to adjust that taste nowhere. And guess what? Shan said we're going to put it in another baggie. So that's what we're going to do. Well, folks, we have made it to the grand finale. You have stuck around through it all. As you can see back there, Ooh, it is a glorious day. Oh, glory there. We got us some of them storm clouds rolling in. Might even sing that Garth Brooks song after a while. And the thunder rolls. I don't know, but stick around with us because this is the last one and it's got a little special kick to it right there at the end. So let's go back to mashing eggs again. Now, you're going to notice something totally different about this recipe right off the start here in just a minute. And you're going to be thinking, the cowboy has lost his mind. No, he ain't, folks. He knows what's going on. This is a good deal, I promise you. Don't think bad of me. We got one egg we didn't cut in half. You know why? Because it's going right in the mixture, too. We're going to use the white to yellow and all of it because I need it for the taste and the body of the little deal. So it's going to be good. You can see now, I didn't mash all of them, just pulverize them to death because I need them to be just like that. But I took me some out there baking and chopped it up with that hash knife very finely. But I do know that you have to save some bacon to feed the critics. So there's one critic. Don't get your paws on the table. And here's the other one. Good boy. They do like some bacon. Let's go ahead and get that bacon in there because this is already looking like breakfast here. Bacon and eggs in a deviled egg. Yeah, you heard it right here, you did. It is going to be some fine dining. Let me move him right here because we're going to move right on to the Duke's Mayo again. They should be sponsoring this. Uh-huh. And then, folks, right after that, we're going to have us some relish. After that, we're going to have just regular old mustard this time, okay? One thing really bothered me when you get some mustard, you know, and you go to squeeze it there at first, there ain't nothing but water. Always give it a good shaking and then it'll be ready to go. Oh, and that's just the right amount right there it is. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to go with what? The W sauce, the thing that Ken has a little trouble pronouncing. And about that much. Yes, we are. Got to have a little garlic. Mm -hmm. Garlic makes everything better. Now, folks, this is where you might think to yourself it could be getting a little odd. Look here. Some honey. Yep, that's what I'm talking about. 100% pure raw honey. And I'm gonna put about that much, just enough it to get some sweet sap to it. Now we gotta mix her all together and then we'll season it with a little salt and pepper just to see what's happening. But mm, I'm already liking the way this looks when I can see that bacon in there and that honey and mustard. Mm, mm. So that is a done deal, that dog will hunt. And let me tell you right there, that will make your tongue reach around and slap you in the back of the head and knock your dentures out. I don't care what kind of poly grip you're eating, that stuff right there is good. So, have baggy wheel travel. I'm looking to open a pastry chef right down here at the river if it don't rain, so let me get her in there. Well, didn't I do a good job there? I did, and let me tell you folks, these might fast become your favorite because it's even get crazier than you thought it was to begin with, remember? But look here, chili powder. Yep, y'all heard me right, folks. This goes so well with that, you gotta have a little chili powder, and look here, it ain't got no sprinkler deal on it, so. You're going to have to be careful today, Kent. Well, folks, I don't know if you can see it, but raindrops is hitting me on the head like B.J. Thomas song. So I'm going to go ahead and start with contestant number one over here. Mm. Mm. That one just 
screams out classic old Sunday afternoon at Easter. So let's move on to the <laughs> relish. See how fast can you eat egg, Kent? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. And last but not least, the chili powder. Mm. You do a rain dance. <laughs> mm. Folks, that was good enough, and we're doing this sort of as an Easter deal. So, Andy, if you don't mind, my friend, would you pop us in some of that there bunny hop music? Look out! Well, folks, even the dogs enjoyed this, and I'm fitting to get wet, and I ain't ashamed, because... Thank you, sweet Jesus, for the rain, because we sure need it in this country. We hope you enjoyed this. Everything you need to know will be down there in the little description below. And hey, we had a good time. Remember, this is a peaceful, happy place to be. I thank all the servicemen and women and veterans and everybody for keeping that old flag flying over here. So from our house to your house, wherever that may be, we love you. We're going to take care of you. God bless you each and every one. I'll see you down the devil egg trail. <clears throat> He sucked that egg down quick. <laughs> what are we gonna do with these here little fellers? All right, never mind, I got it going. Here we go.